ロボットが出てくるアニメっていうのはほとんど 100% に近いぐらいテレビで見てますそういうところからこういうデザインになったかとは思いますで私がこれを作ってるのはいろんな人に喜んでもらえるものを作りたいというところで少しでもその昔の夢に近づいていく一歩だと思ってます Standing at 28 feet and weighing in at 5 tons, the LW Mononofu is a life size robot that was built by one man. LW Mononofu を製作した南雲正明です。2011年から始めまして、2017年の期間、6年間を費やして製作いたしました。Masaaki works as an engineer at Sakaki Bada, a company that develops machines for agriculture, but they also make life size robots that people can operate for fun. And Masaaki, along with his colleagues, have built them all. 自分の力だけで走るんじゃなくて、やっぱり何かを道具を使って移動できるものっていう憧れがあったというか、やっぱりそれ自体も動くっていうことですね。動くものが楽しいっていう感覚でものを作ってます。So when Masaaki's job tasked him with creating a robot to help promote the company, he referenced one of his favorite animes as a kid, right? はい。ガンダムというのをよく見てまして8歳とか9歳ですかね10歳ぐらいまでなのかなそれを見た影響っていうのは多分大きいですね思い出すというかサイドを調べてあそういったものに近づけられるようなものを作りたいと思ってやってました But just building the robot wasn't enough for Masaaki He wanted something that was bigger and better than his previous models He poured his heart and soul into making the LW Mononofu fully operational. It can move its arms, its legs, and has a gun that shoots sponge balls. It's his greatest creation yet. This is the 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 greatest creation yet. 子供の頃見てたアニメというのはもう素早く人間の能力を超えているものはロボットですのでそういうところでの違いでやっぱりまだまだ私の描いているものとは違いますアニメっぽく乗ったなと思わせるものは作っているとは思います人間が考えたことは何かしらいつかは実現できているんだと思います小さな子供は見て乗って自分と同じような考えを持って自分が乗りたいものを作るっていうその子の石杖じゃないですけど、少しでもなっていけば、もっとすごいものが作れていくんじゃないかと思ってます。When I was a kid, I always played with Legos. I built cars, planes, motorbikes. But now. I built an arm. Meet David Aguilar. My name is David Aguilar. I am from Andorra and I'm 18 years old. When David was born, his right arm hadn't fully developed. This is the, my right arm. Well, growing up, it was quite annoying because I received、uh, a lot of commentaries like, oh, you don't have a hand or something like that. And while some would see this as a disadvantage, David is just a regular kid. He likes EDM. He goes by the name Hand Solo. Get it? He has an embarrassing dad. <laughs> he goes to school. This is my school. And he can open doors with his Lego arm. So cool. Growing up, he was obsessed with Lego. So much so, he wanted to make it a part of him. Literally. I built my first prosthetic arm when I was nine years old, and I built it around my hand. It, it started being a boat. Unfortunately, the Lego bricks weren't strong enough, and it wasn't for another nine years till he would try again. This is MK1. This is Lego Technic. It's like、uh, the sophisticated part of Lego. I can do push ups with this thing, so it's quite strong. When I first built the arm and it was fully functional, I went to the mirror and I was like, oh, oh. That model, the MK1, only took five days to build. Of course, like any good inventor, he got straight to work on an upgrade. And this is MK2. It has a battery that works like a biceps, and it has this fishing cable that ties up in here. 
When I fix this to my shoulder, I can do this. And the arm closes. I can stop in the middle and move it by myself. When I first brought this, they were all really amazed because how can somebody create a hand out of Legos? Uh, I was a normal guy and when I built the, the arm, everyone was like, you're awesome, you're, you're really uh, smart. They told me they are really proud to be, to be my friends. It's amazing. A nest is a place where you have a sense of protection and strength. It's like an earth temple or a nature temple. The wood is following a pattern, but not one branch is the same. As a nest builder, I'm following those patterns. Most of the work is trying to bring out the best of those shapes with each other. I'm Jason Fan, and I'm a nest builder. I started building nests as a child. The nest building was really an intuitive process of just gathering branches and, and building forts originally, and the nest grew and got bigger and more elaborate. Now some of the nests are as big as 100,000 pounds of wood. The hardest part of building the nest is really gathering all of the wood. I use a chainsaw to cut wood. I use a machete to cut off all the excess leaves. And from there, I really assess, you know, what kind of shapes I have, what kind of material I have to work with. The construction process of the nest first is creating the foundation and the infrastructure. And then I follow those larger sculptural shapes that I bolt together with smaller material that I can weave in and around. I use every part of the tree, the, the trunk of the tree, all the way down to the very smallest twig and branch of the tree. I've gotten to where I'm used to building them on flatbed trailers and moving them around, and in many cases, I'm transporting them across the country. Because the nests are quite heavy, I use cranes and forklifts and different kinds of equipment. This is all eucalyptus. There's, there's over 75 different species of eucalyptus on this property. I've built around 50 nests all over the country, and now primarily I build the nests with kids within an educational setting. As an educator, like it's really important to work with kids and help them realize that they have the ability to shape and create an environment. I'm gonna show you how we can integrate those branches into the spiral. I love getting kids out into nature interacting with nature and, and the nest is actually very much a collaboration with nature. I know I've done a good job when it looks like the nest is something that could almost have grown out of the ground. Guédelon, c'est une aventure un peu folle au cœur de la forêt bourguignonne. Depuis une vingtaine d'années, on a décidé de, de construire pour comprendre un château fort du XIIIe siècle. Le XIIIe siècle en France, c'est une période fabuleuse. Personne n'avait jamais construit de, dans notre monde contemporain de château du XIIIe siècle. Donc, de la première pierre à la dernière tuile, il va falloir qu'on apprenne. Nous sommes une équipe de 70 personnes, dont une quarantaine qui bâtissent ce château fort. On a annoncé 25 ans et qu'avec cette équipe, rien n'est impossible et les rêves les plus fous sont réalisables. Alors Guédelon il est différent des autres châteaux qui sont dans le monde, tout simplement parce qu'il a été fabriqué au 21e siècle avec des moyens qui, eux, sont médiévaux, hein, avec des techniques qui ont 800 ans. J'ai fait une dizaine d'années de, de chantier un petit peu partout en France. Alors comparer Guédelon avec ce que j'ai fait avant, ça va être difficile parce que euh, 
Guédelon est un chantier qui est unique en fait, c'est de la science, c'est de l'archéologie et euh, ça, ça me convient bien. Quoi. C'est un retour dans l'histoire que je trouve intéressant. Chaque petite pierre a été taillée. Chaque pièce de bois a été abattue à la main, écarrie à la main, euh, tracée à la main par une équipe fabuleuse. Donc ça, c'est magnifique. Et donc là, il y a une énergie incroyable que je trouve complètement émouvante. Là, on a un vrai château en fait et c'est nous qui l'avons fabriqué. Donc moi, je suis quand même super fier de ce qu'on fait. C'est quand même une super aventure. I think it's part of who we are as a species to ask the question of where are we, where did we come from, where are we going, and are we going there alone? The largest mirrors in the world enable a chance for all of us to answer those questions that mean so much to us. My name is Patrick McCarthy, and I'm the principal astronomer behind the Giant Magellan Telescope Project, the largest telescope in the world. Handcrafted start to finish here at the University of Arizona. The process of making a mirror, in some sense it's like making a cake. The first thing is you get all the ingredients. We have the glass. You build the mold and we put the glass on top. And then you put it in the oven. It's then heated up to such a high temperature that the glass melts till it follows into the mold and makes the rough shape of your cake. Now in our case, the icing is the hard part. The mirrors weigh about 17 tons. They're up to 8.4 meters in diameter. That's a really big piece of glass. Then to turn that piece of glass into a final optics takes another two to three years of precision grinding and polishing and testing. Each mirror from start to finish takes roughly seven years to produce and there's roughly a hundred people working on it, so about 200 person years that go into making one of these mirrors. The Giant Magellan Telescope will be sighted in the Chilean Andes. They have the sharpest images in Chile, dry weather, clear skies, and no artificial lights. It's a perfect place for astronomy. The challenge, of course, is how do you handle this beautiful precision piece of glass? And so we lift it with suction cups. The mirrors are moved very carefully because they are glass after all. Telescopes are our vehicles of discovery. There are ships in the universe and the heart of the telescope is the mirror. It's a thing that collects the light that's come from millions or billions of light years away and brings us that information that can allow us to answer those questions. Where did we come from? Where are we going? Are we alone?